Scott, some people are on the pitch. They think it's all over. It is now. Hello and welcome to the They Think It's All Over Christmas special. And with one to play in the series, David Gower leads Gary Lineker by four games to three. With David and Jonathan is a writer and comedian who's recently signed a multi-million pound deal to write a sitcom, which means he can finally afford a season ticket at Chelsea. <laughs> David the deal. <laughs> With Gary and Rory is the BBC's horse racing presenter who says she finds interviewing so enjoyable she'd be happy interviewing mushrooms. So if you see her chatting to Rory's underpants during the show, <laughs> it's Claire Balding. <laughs> we get things moving with our excuses round, David, Jonathan and David, in a dismal attempt to make things seasonal. Your first question concerns snowboarding. Here's Canada's Ross Rebagliati winning the Super G Gold at the last Winter Olympics in Japan. Oh, and Rebagliati taking all sorts of risks on this steep run into the finishing line where the racers are tired, gulping down as much oxygen as possible, but taking too many chances. Rebagliati's time against Keston Holtz, and he's got it. Now, straight afterwards, Rebagliati tested positive for cannabis, but he had a very persuasive excuse. What was it, David's team? Yeah, hang on just a sec. Classic Gower timing. Played the shot long before he needed it. <laughs> and got a duck. We had a question, didn't we? Mm -hmm. Perhaps he wasn't meant to be in the race at all. Perhaps he was just stoned up a mountain. <laughs> snowboarded down to the all night garage to get 15 Caramax. And <laughs> found he won the race. <laughs> Dope isn't really a performance enhancing drug, though, is it? Because it makes you slow, makes you eat a lot of Mars bars. Obviously, they should be testing Paul Gascoigne by now. <laughs> it worked for me. I tried it once, and for 15 years, I thought I was making hundreds for England. <laughs> when the kids smoke dope, as I believe they do, apparently they get something called the munchies. But apparently, even crazed junkies refuse to eat Walker's crisps. <laughs> due to the foul smell that comes from the bag, <laughs> and the grotesque parody of a human being drawn on the cover. <laughs> Would you eat a bag of crisps with John Merrick, the elephant man, on the front? I think not. <laughs> what they're playing, at, I do not know. I think I do actually know the answer to this. What is it? I think, um, I remember reading that he said that he'd been, at, I think he'd either been at a party or had been hanging out with other snowboarders and that they were smoking marijuana and in actual fact he had passively... You're smoking what? <laughs> marijuana. Is that like <laughs> marijuana with Jews in it? Or... <laughs> it's a Jewish dog, <laughs> yeah. It's a bit too sensitive, that's no, right. And they've been smoking... Really it's been smoking... the Christmas show for a start, it's bad enough. <laughs> <laughs> he claimed it was passive smoking, I believe, is that correct? I'll give you three points Thank for you that, yeah. Thank you very I think, I think that's a dis I think that's just a useless excuse. This whole idea of passive smoking. How can you passively imbibe something? You know, if you're just sitting around people, it doesn't mean that you're necessarily doing it yourself. At the Comedy Awards last weekend, I found myself in a room with Graham Norton, Dale Winton and Michael Barrymore. <laughs> but, but you didn't yeah. inhale, did you? <laughs> the answer is that Rebagliati claimed that he had passively inhaled his friend's cannabis smoke. However, he was unrepentant. Unfortunately, I'm not going to change my friends. For you, I don't know, I don't care if any, I don't care what you think about that. I think my friends are real and um, I'm going to stand behind them. So his friends are real and he's going to stand behind them. <laughs> Especially Gandalf the Wizard and Mordric the Dragon Slayer. <laughs> now, Gary, Rory and Claire, it's Christmas and that can mean only one thing, volleyball. At last year's World Championships, China, seen here losing the women's final against Cuba, were subsequently fined by the volleyball authorities. So we want to know what the Chinese had done wrong. Gary's team. That was lovely, wasn't it, eh? I love women's volleyball. I'm glued to the screen often. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I, saw the, I, I didn't see the end of that game because I went blind, but... Um, <laughs> I was fine for watching that in Dixon's, actually. 
I uh, think they didn't participate in group sex. The Cubans did. <laughs> Sorry, you're still saying that. You're not doing that. No way. <laughs> Interesting, is it? Hello. <laughs> Posh bird's gone off on one. <laughs> did you play a bit of volleyball, did you? <laughs> I don't know. What's your sport then, Posh bird? I played lacrosse. What's, yeah. What's, What's that? that? It's kind of hockey at head height. It's very. Sounds all right to me. <laughs> Dangerous. Very vicious. Mm. Is it true posh birds are goers? Because I've heard that. <laughs> I never really met anyone growing up, but I was told dead cert bet if you're in a party. Nurses, posh birds. Is that right? If you found a posh nurse, you might as well just leave your pants at home. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do actually know the answer to this. Do you? Yeah, on, do you? yeah because I, I remember reading it at the time and I was rather shocked actually. Uh, the Chinese, I think, were fined because they didn't show enough flesh. They weren't, showing, they weren't wearing revealing enough clothing. I'll give you three points for that. Which is one Yeah, the player's crime was not to wear sexy enough clothes, as Chantal Mortimer of the British National League side Wessex explains. The International Volleyball Association introduced a new sexy lycra kit, which didn't leave much to the imagination. However, some teams were just too boring to wear it, and that's why they got fined. So, for all you Lycra lovers out there, this is what you missed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was Chantal Mortimer there, along with Tim Hollis and Grant Percy. You see, he always writes them down. Any name, he gets it to be <laughs> filled. <laughs> <laughs> He's doing it again. In 1996, the Polish volleyball players, Vaclav Krzysztofski, Krzysztof Szczeszczy, and Zbigniew Tomaszewski. <laughs> <laughs> and Bratislav supercalifragilistic expialidocious <laughs> didn't make their national team, so they won't be turning up later. <laughs> the volleyball authorities introduced the new regulation to try to compete with the popularity of beach volleyball, which has entirely different rules. Beach volleyball is a two-person game, whereas watching it is very much a solo event. <laughs> Women's beach volleyball took off on Bondi Beach in the 50s, where the beach inspector used to come along with his ruler and measure the players' bikini bottoms to make sure they were the right size. It wasn't until the 1970s that it was discovered there was no such thing as a beach inspector. <laughs> During the coverage of beach volleyball at the last Olympics, Rory set a personal best of 2 minutes 30 seconds. <laughs> And at the end of that round, David's team have three points, and Gary's team have three points. Oh, now, it may surprise you to learn that David has another job, apart from sitting there every week saying <laughs> bugger all. <laughs> He's a wine journalist for the British Airways magazine, no. Skylines. <laughs> hey, sex on a stick. <laughs> and in the most recent issue, David recommends two brands of champagnes for Christmas. Bollinger, of course, and the lesser known Nicholas Fiat. Now, we thought... <laughs> we thought it was time to find out if David is actually good at something by getting him to identify <laughs> which <laughs> of three champagnes. <laughs> Which of three champagnes is which? There's Bollinger, as we no, said. No problem. Nicholas Foyat, and of course, Asda own brand. <laughs> what's, what's the gay bloke from Boy Zone doing on the show? <laughs> <laughs> Watch out! He's, he's writing your name down. <laughs> okay, David, can you tell which is which? <laughs> is the last one there so he can put his teeth in them? <laughs> Come on, David. The drummer's getting paid by the minute. <laughs> OK. That's the Bollinger. That's the Asda. Before you drink that, my cat went missing earlier today. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the Nicola Fiat. Not bad. You got the first one right, but the other two wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's not bad, though. I think that's very good. I knew you'd get the Bollinger. But let's face it, if you are prepared to read a column by David Gower on wine on an airplane, then you must already be completely <laughs> faced. <laughs> our next round tests the musical ability of our teams as we play Sing When You're Winning. A couple of seasonal terrace ditties for you both, Gary's team. It's those first division strugglers for you, Nottingham Forest. A 
And when a manger, no crib for a bed, the little Lord Jesus looked up and he said, what? Gary's team. Can I, can I just say something to this? Because from my own racial perspective about mm -hmm. what I think this should be. I think it should be, away in a manger, no crib for a bed. The little Lord Jesus looked up and he said, I'm not actually the Messiah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know you were Welsh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll definitely put that out on Christmas Day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> the birthday of the Christ child. <laughs> You come here on our Christian day of celebration, pockets <laughs> with your rabbinical beard <laughs> and your money-lending ways. <laughs> I'll give you That's three it, lions. <laughs> it's the no taboo left in touch. <laughs> Still, you were very, very good in Oliver Twist. OK. We <laughs> think um, Jesus Christ, Son of God, Miracle Worker, Nottingham Forest. Um, hey, there's only one person that walks on water, and that's me. <laughs> yeah, it's nothing to do with Bruce Forsyth. Who's <laughs> <laughs> at the Forest Hate? Must be someone near them. Uh, Who the Forest Derby County? Derby, probably. Derby. Derby. Dutch Elm disease. <laughs> <laughs> well, is it something to do with Derby? Like, you know, little Lord Jesus looked up and he said, We ate Derby, mm -hmm. we ate Derby, we ate Derby, we ate Derby. We ate Derby. Correct for three points. Well done. Absolutely. <laughs> Let's hear how the song continues. New manager David Platt took over at the start of the season and promised to get Forrest out of the first division at the earliest opportunity. <laughs> Luckily for him, he didn't say in which direction. <laughs> Former Forest boss Brian Clough has recently had a blue plaque with his name on it put on the side of his house. It's not to honour him, it's to help him find his way home after a night out. <laughs> David's team from First Division Strugglers Nottingham Forest to First Division Strugglers Grimsby Town. <laughs> Is that, so, all, is that all we have to work with? Yeah, we three fish. fans of Grimsby Town well, for, take our fish around the ground. Firstly, I can't believe this is correct because Grimsby Town fans can't take their fish around the grounds because it'd be wet and slippery and horrible. And secondly, I don't believe that they've actually got three fans. <laughs> and there's some Grimsby Town fans in, aren't there? Yes. What are you doing here? They are, they are the three fans and they've travelled far because there was a star above the studio. <laughs> It's a good time to ask a theological question, and as it's Christmas. I think so. Yeah, do fish believe in cod? <laughs> With a trout up front and a haking gull, nobody gets past the groom to be shoal. That's excellent. Anybody fancy going to a funeral? <laughs> <laughs> Have to cheer yourselves up. <laughs> We don't know. We don't know. No one knows. Not even people who live in Grimsby know this. You know this. This is what they actually <laughs> sing. <laughs> During World War II, all Grimsby's trawlers were named after first-class cricketers and took part in the war effort. The Bradman, the Hammond and the Larwood all acquitted themselves very bravely, while the Gower got three minutes out of port, misjudged an easy iceberg and went down with all hands. <laughs> These days, attendances at Grimsby are so small that to make identification easier, it's the crowd that have their names written on their backs. <laughs> OK, at the end of that round, David's team have three points and Gary's team have six. <laughs> now, before the next round, an apology. In a recent programme, we suggested that this was the most disgusting photograph <laughs> ever seen on British television, and not this. <laughs> we now realise that we made a serious error of judgement, and that this picture is far, far worse. <laughs> disgusting and indeed disturbing. And while we're on the subject of baffling sexual tastes, we've actually found someone who fancies Gary. 
In Match of the Day's own magazine, there's an interview with his biggest fan who says, I'll tell you someone who's really gorgeous, that Mr Lineker. I can't look at him, can't even talk if he's on the screen. He's just beautiful. So, many thanks for that to self-styled gay cabaret artist, Paul Hull. <laughs> Let me just write that down. Yeah. <laughs> no, there is he. A change of pace in this next round as we oh. celebrate the holy nativity of our Lord Jesus Christ by playing Guess the Grunt. Plenty of top sportsmen and women grunt their way to victory, but how well can you identify them? Gary's team, it's the guttural queen of the tennis courts for you, Monica Selesh. But which of these three grunts is the real Monica? <laughs> so, Gary's team? She definitely was playing tennis when this yeah. was recorded. <laughs> when else do women grunt? When they get stabbed. <laughs> <laughs> the secret life of Gary Lineker. <laughs> Could we hear that again? Because I've never heard a woman groan like that before. Actually, you know, it's funny you mention that because, um, as you know, my dressing room is next to Gary. And earlier on today, I saw Michelle going in there and I heard just those noises coming out. Uh, Jonathan, your dressing room is next to David's. <laughs> well, what was Michelle... Oh, Gary, now I'm sorry. <laughs> For you to find out in this way. Well, it's Christmas. Oh, well, that's OK, then. Good. So you haven't heard them in front. What um, noise do they make, then, Gary? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All familiar. Mm. Well, let me think. That one that goes... Uh, <laughs> that's posh spice after a cooked breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> that one, uh, ah, that's Ulrika and Stan on a night out. <laughs> you say she, that Monica has a double grunt. Definitely. Too. Yeah, Monica yeah. has a double grunt. It's not a yeah. single grunt. <coughs> Rather than Ooh, just... Go uh, again, Claire. Please. <laughs> Time. Exactly. Is that uh, a posh grunt? That's a posh grunt. No, yeah. no, posh grunt is... Oh! <laughs> David's really excited now. It was a little bit exciting. It genuinely was yeah. exciting. Can we hear them again? Can, Can we hear them again, please? Just do you want to pull the trigger? <laughs> The ball now. Yeah, definitely. That's yeah. a footballer, the third one now. I, I think the first one's the only one... I, um, yeah, the, the first one sounds to me like Monica. Strange face to pull, though, when you're playing tennis in that. I think she's auditioning for Watership Down. <laughs> <laughs> so you think, um, A. You think A? OK, let's have a look. Yeah, it was. It was indeed run A, three points. French player Natalie Tozier formally complained to the umpire about Monica's grunting at Wimbledon in 1992. And she was playing down the road at the Queen's Club at the time. <laughs> David's team, it's javelin thrower Steve Backley for you. But which of these three grunts belongs to Britain's number one? <laughs> They make more about the laugh, don't they? Hey! Hey! Grunt A is someone in the stand being hit by Steve Backley's jab. Yeah. <laughs> Third one I thought was Rory having sex, but they went on just a bit too long. You could get in big trouble if you were criticised and said, I don't like those grunting javelin players, couldn't you? Javelin players. <laughs> I know a lot about sports. <laughs> I know your, your, your soccer, I know your boxing. Go on the Chelsea's, I know it all. Yeah. So, Jonathan, who plays at Molyneux? Peter Gascoigne. <laughs> <laughs> I think one of those was James nice Brown, wasn't it? The Godfather saw it. Ow! I yeah. feel good. Because yeah. <laughs> I throw my wood now. <laughs> I feel fine. It's a gone past your line now. <laughs> Sometimes, Jonathan, I just want to give you 50p for a cup of tea. <laughs> you know what? A couple of you years just sit there and go. <laughs> 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 I'm trying to make up more enthusiasm, <laughs> but I lack in talent. Come on, boys. There are people actually leaving to go... We obviously their don't know. No, Even he is. doesn't know what noise he makes when he hurls the stick. Captain, we're going to defer to your wisdom. Certainly, it shouldn't take long. It's the Bollinger. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, A, B or C? B. B, OK, let's see if you're right. Hey! Oh, 
a C. Yeah, a C. Don't say C oh, as if you knew. Good. Yeah, no point. Because you've got we enormous bloody ears, you can tell the difference. <laughs> Double Olympic gold medalist and world number one, Jan Zalesny, is known as a brute force thrower, whereas silver medalist and world number two, Steve Backley, relies on rhythm and finesse. So, Steve, mate, try brute force. It works. <laughs> and at the end of that round, David's team have three and Gary's team have Good. nine. Time now for Feel the Sportsman, a pair of sporting titans for our regulars to identify using only their astonishing powers of touch. David's team, we're up first. Come on, you're do it. Oh, Come on, you big grey Nancy boy. <laughs> <laughs> you appreciate that I've gone full on for the decorations. Even added a little something for the ladies. <laughs> <laughs> that means stop, that means go. <laughs> Is it better with that eye or with that eye? Is it clearer now or now? Stop <laughs> on. Okay, go on, put on. Let's go. And can we have our first mystery guest, please? <laughs> Okay. <laughs> you have 90 seconds to work out who's in front of you, starting now. It's a letter Y. <laughs> this episode of Sesame Street is brought to you by... Well, hold on, she's... It's a girl, isn't it? You need to go in front of you, go towards the front of the stage. Yeah. I've lost a slipper. <laughs> but if the prince finds it and comes to my house, I know I'll be married. <laughs> This is, what is this? Well, it's, very, it's a little pony jumping thing. Stand still for <laughs> sake. <laughs> hey, he's got away with the ladies, hasn't he? <laughs> Who's this? Come Hello? here. Speak up, speak You're up. You're an exchange student. <laughs> <laughs> Are you allowed to talk to me? <laughs> this is a new dimension. <laughs> What is it? This is your floor? Yeah, this is my... You haven't been I'm... in our country for long then, have you? <laughs> <laughs> you stand on this floor. Yeah. You must be a gymnast. Is it a gymnast? Um... Yeah, come on. Well, it's not Suzanne. Lady, Andrew. It's a foreign lady's voice. Well, it's Nadia Comanets, can't we, yeah? Um... Olga Corbett. The old... Come on, Andrew! Oh, there you go. <laughs> Olga, my little love. Hello, thank you. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> no. Well done, thank you very much. Gary and Rory, your turn now. <laughs> I'm fed up of feeling dodgy things. Fed up of feeling what, Gary? Well, they're never two women, are they? <laughs> OK. Can we have our second mystery guest, please? <laughs> Your 90 seconds starts now. <laughs> oh. oh. Are you having a feel, Gary? No. I am. It's the one. Feel the genital area, Gary. <laughs> I think I'll enjoy it. <laughs> come on, on, Gary, come on. on. You'll love it. How are you getting on, Gary? Oh, I'm having a good old feel, me, Gary. I don't know about you. Come on. Where are you then? <laughs> huh? oh, yeah. I'm here, Gary. I'm right behind you, mate. It Honestly. Wouldn't, it wouldn't be the, um, those volleyball bloke. That volleyball bloke. No. Which I wrote down. No. <laughs> and now I can't remember the name. I it's... think it's a fan of yours, <laughs> Gary, you know? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I heard <it> home. <laughs> I put 
put my gloves back on. Um, um, what was his name, Rory? Paul Harley. Oh, oh great! <laughs> We have three points well done. So at the end of that round, David's team have six points and Gary's team have 12. We end the show much like all the others with the name game. And of course, uh, Gary's team are leading, but remember that David's team are leading in the series. So it's all very, very tense. Oh, next four goodness. minutes. As many as you can get in the next 90 seconds, starting now. Little Jockey, works for you. Little Willie. Willie, Carlson. Go, go. Um, oh, openly gay cabaret artist, fan of yours. Graham Norton. What's his name there? Uh, yeah, what's his name? Um, Paul Hull. Was very it? good, very good. Oh, you do know. <laughs> Forest manager, ex Arsenal player. Forest David, manager! David, right. David Platt! David Platt! Uh, second name, little, little Red Riding Hood was being pursued by a wolf. wolf. And he was horny, another word for horny. Uh, um, excited. Randy, Randy Wolf. Randy Very Wolf. Good indeed. Um, born in the manger. Jesus. Yeah, he was senior, but if he had a little boy as well. Jesus Junior. Very good. <laughs> uh, this is David Gower's sport. Ha ha ha. Cricket. Noel. Yeah. Noel. And second, second cricket. word. Cricket. cricket. Second word. Something you give to someone you like. <laughs> Part of the, Present. Part of the body. Gift. Part Present. of the body. Um, Chest. Higher than that. Head. Very good. Cricket. Cricket. Oh, Rory, that's yeah. disgusting. First name. First name. Royal <laughs> House of Scotland. <laughs> Stuart. 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 Yes. Um, an animal that you ride. Horse. And it comes after liver on Merseyside. Pool. Pool. Yeah, Stuart very, Horse Stuart, Pool. very good. A uh, word for, of word, a uh, posh word for biting. Nibbling. <laughs> Chewing. <laughs> From the Chewing. Latin, moderate. Mastication. Come on. More, more, more. More than, more than. Very good, you moved on to 22. <laughs> so 14 will win it for you. It's as good as done. Yeah. <laughs> It's going to be a good Christmas after all, Gower. Your 90 seconds start. Michael Savage. Now. Uh, 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 Leslie, tennis player, not famous for a grunt Martina at all. Never there you go. Okay. <laughs> this bloke uh, is a Scottish goalie from years ago. If you are a gay bloke and you like certain Alan type Ruff. of trade, there you go. Okay. Um, <laughs> he's a referee, controversial Sorry one. If you're me. Dickens, you can have a Dickens reference or a heavy rock reference. Something heap, first name. Uriah Rennie. Uh, yeah, well done. Okay, uh, this one would be like a metallic erection. <laughs> He's a psychist. Well, no, 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 you don't bash the... Bishop. Right, OK. And the first letter is, it's made of metal, it's a very shiny metal, and it's stainless... Steel Steel Bishop. Steel Bishop. Well done. <laughs> OK, he's a bloke. Um, OK, this is an Australian runner. His last name is, um... The thigh bones connected to the... Hip. No, but the other... <laughs> well, yes, it is, but then the other side, the thigh bones connected to the... Down mm. below, that is the other bone. Knee bone. Knee bone, OK. Knee -bone. That's a sp and if you're on a submarine, you go up. Periscope. Periscope. And the first bit is, that's right, Paris Nebo. And yeah. the and the beginning bit, uh, I used to write a song, Champagne Super. Nova. That's good enough. All right, OK. Uh, this is, is an Australian Nova tennis player. Uh, second name is... Doolagong. Close. Uh, if you, if you, someone got you in the eye, you say, stop doing that in my eye. Stop. Poking. Yeah, OK. And if you, if you were feeling a bit wary, you'd have the... Horn. Yeah, OK, poking horn. And the first name is the someone of Troy. <laughs> Helen. There you go, Paul. OK. This, oh, this is ridiculous. <laughs> I, do, I do not believe there's such a person. <laughs> right, the sir, sir, first name is, uh, and the something goes on. Beat. Uh, the Titanic crossed into one, but it wasn't quite the same. Now, that means that Gary's won this episode, but it means that in the series they are level at four games oh, all, yeah. which means mm. it's tie-break time. Hey, now, we'll you may... We'll, up, we'll settle for a draw. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's quite a result for you, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> now, you may or may not remember Rory presented Rory McGrath's commercial breakdown. In fact, it soon became a multi-hundred selling video. <laughs> now, we know of at least one sale to a member of our production team the other week. What we want to know is how much to the nearest penny did the video cost him? David. Can we confirm? No. Two we haven't got the time. 2.99. 2.99, Gary? I'll go under that. <laughs> <laughs> well, say a number eight. 
90p, 99p. Ooh, the answer is 98p. Oh, oh. So our thanks to David, Jonathan and David, Gary, Rory and Claire. We're all off to give Paul Hull a big bunch of mistletoe. My name's Nick Hancock, they think it's all over, it is now.